so he's not going to come, I guess. You better, you better pour that into an NCAA cup. Did we decide if Manny is coming? Hey, Simon. Yeah. Did, did we decide if Manny is coming or no? Hello, hello. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, just a couple of reminders. No flash photography and no video. We have our microphones on either side, so please state your name and affiliation and direct your question to the appropriate student athlete. We'll start down here. Okay. Um, hey, guys. How you doing? Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I guess it, uh, for, for maybe Manny and Moses, you know, Carolina is a plus 13 a rebounding. Just um, what do you think of that? How tough a challenge is that for you guys? Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, Seton Hall, I think, was plus seven. And we didn't do a good job on the board. So, I mean, we got we to gotta box out, hit people, and, and help our bigs, help Moses, DT, Trey, all those guys, help them rebound. The guards got to rebound really well this game. Moses, you want to comment on that too? Um, yeah, just like Manny said, we got a rebound. We're gonna do a better job than we we did last um, last game. Um, we have to and we have to do it collectively. We have to do it as a team. Um, the guards, the the big two, everybody. Yeah, dude. Um, 
you know, the, Manny and Mose, you guys obviously played Carolina two years ago, and this is the third time, third straight time that Arkansas has been in the tournament. They're playing Carolina in the second round. Just what, what do you guys think about that? It seems like Arkansas can't, can't get away from Carolina. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's fun. It's, you know, it's an opportunity. They're the, a one seed, so what, uh, what more fun can you have than knocking off a one seed and moving on in the tournament? So I think it's just a great opportunity. Uh, I don't know how the committee does the things, but I mean, that's what they did, so we're ready to go. Whoever we're playing, we're ready for. Jalen, you want to comment on that too, please? I mean, I, I guess it's going to be fun to play in the game against North Carolina. I wasn't here two years ago when they played them, but I just know they, they always talk about it. So I think it's going to be fun to play. We're just ready to play. Jalen, since the postseason start of Bobby Swafford, campus in Fayetteville, uh, since postseason play started, you're leading the team in scoring, and most of that is attacking the basket. Have you changed your style of game, or what have you done differently over the last four games? Uh, no, I just uh, stay more aggressive and just try to make plays for everybody and myself and just keep attacking because I know once I attack, it opens up a lot of things, so I just stay attacking. Uh, Mitch Roberts with 4029 News back in Arkansas. Moses. Uh, against Seton Hall, they had the one big guy, Delgado, and you know he, he gets his every game. Carolina has so many more bigs. Are you a uh, little bit concerned that they've got several Angel Delgados going instead of just one? Um, just like I said earlier, um, we have to do a collective job of because they have size. <clears throat> they have size. The guards, the bigs, they're big. They're big, bigger than the team we played last time. And we got to do a better job of keeping everybody off the glass because everybody, almost all five of them, go to the glass every time they shoot the ball. And I think they just they shoot it, go get it, and then put it back. Um, whereas, just like I said, we we got to we got to do a collective job box, boxing out everybody and getting the ball and going with it. Dudley Dawson, Hogs Illustrated. Uh, Dustin, you had such a good game yesterday. Talked about what worked well for you and how you want to continue that against North Carolina. How important that is. Um, I just knocked down that first jumper, got going early, and just kept the same rhythm and confidence throughout the rest of the game. Um, they've been playing off me a little bit, uh, sagging in there on Mo. So them the shots I got to take. Manny Drew Ammon here, NBC in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Do you feel a lot more confident in your team at this stage in the season, knowing how you guys are mixing defenses based upon the fact that you go all the way back to early February, you guys were able to go to the zone against LSU, and that kind of turned the tide a little bit. Made you guys maybe a little more confident defensively. Does that make you confident going into a game like this against North Carolina? Uh, yeah, I mean, one thing with us is we're a really confident team. And I mean, it's kind of hard not to be when you're one of 32 teams left in Division One basketball playing in the NCAA tournament. So I mean, we, we have the utmost confidence in our offense, our defense, and us being able to switch around defenses and go at people with different looks is, I mean, a key part of what we do. So, I mean, we're going into the game with 100% confidence like we do every game. Yeah, maybe for um, Manny and Moses, if anybody else wants to take it. You know, last week, you guys, a week ago, tomorrow, you guys played Kentucky in a cold neutral site, but obviously they had the crowd. You know Carolina's going to have the crowd here tomorrow. Do you think playing Kentucky last week and that their talent level, that atmosphere helps prepare you for tomorrow? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, we've been playing at neutral sites. Uh, they, they obviously had a lot more fans, and Carolina's going to have a lot more uh, tomorrow. But we don't really get into the, uh, you know, the fans and, and, and the atmosphere. We're just here to play basketball and do what we love to do. So, I mean, that's all our focus is, is going to be, is just trying to get a win. And they got five guys out there. We got five guys out there. That's, that's basketball. Moses, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, we they have five guys and we have five guys and we're gonna come out and play. Um, they don't have more guys than we do on the court, so we have to do what we we came to do. Don't worry about the fans and just do what we do, what we've been doing for the whole season. Um, just come out and execute, get stops, get rebounds, and let's push the ball. Yeah, maybe for Jalen, I, I think I got this right. I think eight seeds are, are eleven and fifty-three against one, so it's not impossible. But obviously the odds are stacked against you. Just how do you guys feel about? An eight seed taking on a one. How would you like to add Arkansas to that that group of, of eight seeds that have upset ones? 
Uh, I think. Oh, uh, we well, can't answer that question. Again? My bad. I just okay, sorry. It's okay. You got a lot on your mind. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's right. Eight seeds are eleven and fifty-three against one seed. So obviously the odds are against you, but it's not impossible because eleven teams have done it. Um, what, what do you think about those odds and, and your all's chances of, of being you know becoming the twelfth team to do it? I think our chances are pretty good. I think we're a pretty good team. Honestly, we can play anybody in the country. I just think we got to come out and play. We really not worry about what the seed is. Honestly, we just. Got to take it one game at a time. Anything else for the student athletes? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good, thank you. Yes, please. We'll have you do just a quick opening comment and then we'll start questions. All right, we'll get started with a few open comments from Coach and then we'll do questions. I guess it's round two now with, uh, with us surviving and advancing and playing against an uh, outstanding North Carolina team. Uh, seemed like it was two years ago, I think. We was at this same place playing against a North Carolina team. So, uh, but here it is, and uh, we're one of 30 teams, two teams that are still playing. So we're, we're looking forward to the opportunity to play against, a, like I said, uh, one of the bigger teams in the country. Uh, uh, their perimeter players are playing well. Justin is playing well. Um, I mean, it's, 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 I think four of those guys, four of their starters, uh, those guys played, uh, <clears throat> we played them two years ago. I think they were freshmen and maybe sophomores. And so it's an experienced team, uh, Meeks, Hicks. Uh, uh, they're very, very good basketball team. So we, we got our work cut out for us, especially after giving up 21 offensive rebounds last night to, uh, <clears throat> to Seton Hall. And we know we can't let that occur with uh, North Carolina. If, if so, it'll be over real quick. And, of course, Joel Berry is playing outstanding for them. Uh, but our guys are looking forward to the opportunity to – to continue to play good basketball. I think we're playing good basketball. We're finding ways to win. Uh, uh, even when things don't look like, uh, uh, don't look promising, uh, our guys have had the resilience to find a way to win. And we've done that throughout the year. So we, uh, we use those experiences uh, to get us to this point. And so, uh, again, we're going to have to play an awful good game against a, a very good North Carolina team. Mike, uh, Mark Bradley from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. Hey, Mark. Um, uh, hey, um, it was this week a year ago that uh, your conference made Mike Trangizi a, uh, a consultant on how to get more teams to the tournament, obviously. Obviously, you got more this year, but do you see that SEC basketball have made strides this year, and do you see tomorrow as a day with, with both you and South Carolina playing ACC teams here where something really good could happen? Well, it's an opportunity for us. I mean, you got to be in those situations in order to, uh, when you talk about the brand, the SEC brand we, we, we talk about. And, yes, I, I think we had five teams, uh, possibly had six or seven teams uh, in the tournament. And it's what you do once you get into the tournament. So uh, South Carolina had an outstanding game uh, last night. Vanderbilt 
was probably one player away from winning as well. Uh, but I, I, I think the commitment from the SEC has been, been awesome from the institutions, each institution with the coaching, coaches they're bringing in. Uh, uh, I think they're really pouring into their programs, and, and I think you're going to see a big difference. And, and we're seeing it right now. Uh, I think it just, I think it's starting to scratch the surface when you talk about recruiting, uh, the coaches that are in place, and uh, even this year. Uh, you know, we had three last year, three teams in the tournament last year. We got five this year. So I think it's just a sign of some great things to come, and we'll be one of the better conferences uh, in the country. Brett Friedlander, North State Journal. Um, Coach, what do you remember about that game uh, against Carolina two years ago down in Jacksonville? It was an up and down game. I remember that. It was, uh, you know, they, I thought we came in playing at a high level, and they were playing at a high level as well. Uh, I remember Paige taking over in the second half. Uh, I mean, he was almost like a one-man wrecking crew. Uh, but they had some other, the big guys, I remember the big guys, uh, really dominating the glass. And uh, uh, as we went up and down the floor, they attacked us and attacked us pretty well at, at the basket. Uh, the game, I think, in what about maybe 10 minutes ago or eight minutes ago, it was, it was 50, 50, almost 50 to 50 or something like that. Uh, we had a chance to tie or something, and then they went on a run and ended up winning by double figures. But I thought it was a game that was up and down the floor, and, and that's what I think we're going to see uh, with this, this game tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Mike, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, hey, the, the the ones haven't lost in the second round very often, but you, you you've experienced that. I, I think you, you UAB. I think you guys were a nine seed, eight or nine when you beat Kentucky. What's it take f for to beat a, a number one seed in that second round game? Do you think? And what what do you guys have to do tomorrow? I think we got to play well. We got to play outstanding basketball. And I, I draw back on those experiences that, that I had at at UAB. You know, to me it was not necessarily just seeds. It was just two teams playing each other. And, I, and we were the underdogs. I mean, no one gave us a chance. And just like now, no one's given us a chance. And so uh, in that locker room that, that we, we, we had, uh, those guys believed. And they came out and, and they gave themselves a chance. It was like David versus Goliath. Uh, never forget it. And you know, we, we threw a, a mighty big blow with a big rock. We did. And so it's going to take one of those kind of efforts. Uh, you got to play almost perfect basketball. Uh, and, of course, they got to do some things that not play well. But defensively, uh, we, we got to keep them off the boards. I think that's going to be big and not let them just get easy opportunities at the basket. Uh, you know, our strength has been our bench. Our bench has played well for us. But it's going to be a physical ball game, and we got to match their physicalness. Uh, we got to make the game uh, chaotic, uh, disruptive. Uh, we can't be predictable. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we know they have size. Justin Jackson is playing at a high level. Shot the ball extremely well. Barry can shoot the ball. Uh, but we got to limit them to one shot when they do shoot it. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Mike, uh, given the fact two years ago you said the game was an up and down one uh, with North Carolina, do you anticipate the same? I mean, you guys like to run. They like to run. You talked about chaos, causing chaos. Do you think it's going to be that same up and down, or do you do you want to kind of take them out of that rhythm? Well, I, I think they like to get up and down the floor, so I don't think it's about what we, uh, you know, we, we're going to worry about what we do. But I'm sure that Roy, uh, he, he's not going to change. You know, we're not going to change. I mean, you, you do what got you here to the dance. In the SEC, uh, Bobby Swafford, KFSM in Fayetteville. Uh, and at postseason play, Jalen looks like he's elevated his game to another level, leading you in scoring. Is he doing anything differently, or is it as simple as his shots are starting to fall? No, I just think he's taking command of our basketball team. I think uh, and he's doing it kind of quietly. He's not talking or boastful about it. He just, I think with his play, and our guys are following his lead. Uh, he's more comfortable in, in his role, so to speak. You know, sometimes guys come in, they try to fit in. You know, I, uh, especially a junior college player. Uh, I don't need him to fit in. I need him to come play. And I think he's taken that mindset and, and, and run with it. I think Daryl has done the same thing. And, and so we're going to need Daryl to play at that same level for us tomorrow in order to have a chance. Yeah, Mike, hey, Bob down here again. Hey, uh, this is going to be the sixth time Arkansas and Carolina have played in the tournament. I guess it will be your fifth involvement. Either as an assistant or a head coach. Obviously, Lee played against them. Scotty played against them. It always seems like Arkansas is playing Carolina for whatever reason. What, what do you think about that? And just kind of what do you think about the history you guys have had in the tournament? Well, obviously, uh, you know, the Ar 
you know, North Carolina has great tradition, and, uh, and we have tradition as well. And I guess that says that, you know what, when you get in this tournament and you start advancing, you're going to play uh, outstanding teams. And it's just it's amazing how, you know, they play for championships. And, and we've had an opportunity. I've been a part of three Final Fours. Uh, we had a chance to play for some championships too. So, I mean, that's, maybe that's, that's what it means. Uh, we're trending that direction. Uh, but when you play in this tournament, you're going to play tremendous teams, uh, whether it be North Carolina, um, you know, we played Arizona. We played many teams in the tournament. Played Duke as well. Uh, so that means you're advancing in it. You mentioned their rebound. They're like a plus 13. I think it leads the nation. Watching them, I mean, what, what makes them such a, such a good rebound team? I think they only have one guy averaging more than six rebounds. So it seems like it's everybody's, you know, get, getting a few here and there. Man, they got eight pros, man. You see all those guys they got, man? Eight, nine pros. <laughs> you got pros, they can go get it. And they got size. They got, I mean, they got girth. I mean, they they, they got experienced guys, and uh, and so again, it's it's going to be the ultimate challenge for our team because that's something we hadn't done uh, consistently, hadn't done as as well as I would like us to be. I mean, we're not going to be a great team, but we got to keep people off the glass. Go ahead. You again, um, Bob? Yeah, I don't want you to be bored up there. Um, <laughs> hey, p p piggybacking on Mark's question about the SEC, the, the SEC was was four and one in the first round. You you and Carolina both beat Big East teams. Everybody's always talking about the Big East and basketball. Just just how how good a statement do you think you guys made in that first round? And then obviously want want to make you know tomorrow too. It was the first game. It was the first game in the tournament, and and uh, you know, I know from a coaching standpoint, you uh, you get nervous about that game. And especially, I got seven new guys. Seven guys have never done a Razorback uniform. And here they are in the NCAA tournament going into the second round uh, and playing in the first round. Uh, but those guys came and they see things through my eyes and uh, they came out and they played well. Uh, in terms of for the conference, I think it, it speaks well in terms of what, uh, what our conference is all about. People look at our conference and and thought it was down this year, but it was not. I mean, we, we lose at Missouri, we lose to Vanderbilt, uh, we lose at home to Mississippi State, uh, and we lost to Florida a couple of times, <laughs> but our league is really good. I mean, you're in the family, you start fighting each other, and so now it's kind of neat to get out of the family and go play some other teams and, and hopefully uh, uh, do well in the tournament and, and, and continue to, to, to put the brand of the SEC basketball. It's for real. Mike, uh, you need some water, so let me know. Hey, j j yeah, I'm going to get some water down, Bob. Okay. Justin Jackson, I think he was sort of in a mini shooting slump. He had about four games where he was shooting around 30%. He looked like he broke out yesterday. Were you kind of hoping he, he his struggles would continue? Just what do you think about him as a player? He's a good player. I mean, he's averaging almost 20 points a game probably here uh, in, in conference by 18. He's leading their team. And he's ex expanded his range. I mean, I see him cutting to the basket. He can rebound the basketball. He can pass it. I mean, he's a, uh, he had a chance to see this kid grow, watching him in from high school, uh, getting a chance to try to recruit him a little bit. But when you look at two years ago, he was a true freshman. And now he's like the leader of this basketball team. So he's, he's grown as a player. And uh, that's what good players do. They develop. And I think he's developed into a, a very good, outstanding player. And, you know, you don't look at stats this time of the year. You got guys that got to produce, and he knows he's got to produce for his team. Anybody else? Have, um, you, you know, obviously Dustin had, you know, like you said, probably the best game of the year. How? What do you think the odds are that he can duplicate that tomorrow? And how important is it that he play big against a team like Carolina and all their size and everything? I think he'll come out and play. I think he'll come out and give us everything he has. You know, it's been with with those guys, uh, with those forwards. Uh, when you talk about Dustin. DT, we call him DT, and talk about uh, Orlando Cook, uh, as well as Trey Thompson. Uh, always somebody's been on for us, and it's going to take uh, more than just one guy being on. Uh, I thought uh, DT had his best game, and uh, who knows, it may be DT and Trey and Cook. Uh, we're going to need them against, you know, the forward contingency that, the forward contingency that uh, North Carolina has. You good, Bob? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bob's press conference, huh? <laughs> wow. Thanks for showing up, Bob. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you all. All right. Thank, thank you all.
I appreciate your questions. They're good. <laughs> We're just harassing you. Um, it's 30 total minutes from when the players came in here. Let me, let me check. Okay. Hey, is the Arkansas locker room still open? It's still open. Yeah, you have a couple minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone have any read on um, Carolina's players who are coming back in? Okay, thanks. You said Meeks and who? Barry. Okay. That's all right. They didn't. They didn't ask him any questions yesterday. <laughs> right. Appreciate it. I mean, at least he asked somewhat intelligent questions. Yeah. They, that's exactly right. At least he asked something. Yeah. I was home on day one. He was, uh, he was about to say his name. He said, like, I know you're wrong. <laughs> Good. Well, we really do it so the people on the video can hear who's asking the question, not because, like, they don't know him. But... What's the score of um, the West Virginia game? They were up by nine. Yeah. They were up nine with seven minutes to go. Thank you. Why will Tim be sad? Did you really? Um, so I actually grew up a Notre Dame fan and um, wanted to go out. I'm Did from you? Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And so I went out to look at school there. My dad was like, man, if we're going to go all the way to Indiana, can we please look somewhere else? So I was like, all right, let's go to Indiana as well. And I ended up love falling in love with IU and ended up a Hoosier and instead of, yeah. Well, Plus that? it was three hours south, so it was a little bit warm. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't yeah, that's south true too, strange. Yeah. But uh, I've always been a Notre Dame football fan, not as much. I mean, I, once I became a Hoosier, it's yeah, hard, to, um, hard to. When did you graduate from Indiana? OT. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Actually, with Mike Davis, oddly enough, I worked with Mike Davis Coach and I got fired my junior year, and I was working in media relations, so chapel with Coach Davis for my last two years. Oh, wow. Um, so it was funny to oh, kind okay, of yeah. cross paths yeah, again. Uh, I, uh, that. I mean, really, that was cool. Yeah, so. I was at the Final Four in 02 in Atlanta. In Atlanta, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we never should have been there, but made some sweet Duke and Sweet 16. Oh, yeah. Very it was improbably, amazing. Yeah, amazing did come run. back. And, um, so, yeah, it was a tough interesting place to be at that time. Yeah, I, oh boy, <laughs> For yeah. sure. Um, oh, I remember what that is. People. Yeah, I remember sitting there in a some outside rally. I remember yeah, watching people were the burning coach things. Night. Yeah, and, oh yeah. Um, it, was, it was crazy. I mean, people just come to the athletic department just dump all of their gear, and they, like, they were so angry. Yeah. And then, of course, we had a black coach, so that really, like, yeah. you know, the whole lot of people the wrong way. I felt bad for him because he really just didn't have – he never, he was never going to have a chance right. to be successful there. Um, so, yeah, it's a very interesting <laughs> but he did time. Though. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, he, he did some good things. And he was yeah. not bad at UAB either. I mean, no, they, yeah. they did all right there. So. Absolutely. Um, He's been great where he is now. Yeah. Three straight 60 and two of them. Yeah. I, 
I know. Well, he just, yeah. He's not bringing either of the guys who were here last night. So if you have any question for him, you probably don't know. So, um, it, just in case, yeah. 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 Um, I don't know if you remember. I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't around Clemson too much. My. I used to be married to Will Robertson. He was a GA under Coach Purnell. Um, so uh, I know Jill and Jess quite well. Um, and I knew that Will had known you from his. I mean, it was gosh, almost ten years ago now. <laughs> so, um, but the, yeah, I, that's when I was helping Hunter and Furman because um, I had worked at Davidson before that, and so knew them, and so just kind of filled in. Oh, out of college, 02 to 05. Um, and then we moved around a lot, as you do in the coaching coaching world. And so well, when I was at Clemson, I did work at Furman. And then we moved to, we were in Atlanta at Emory with um, one of the former Davidson assistants was a head coach there. So I, but I still did work for Hunter because they kept getting, they weren't able to hire any new folks and then took the job at Elon. That's where I was the last time I was in sports. So it's been about three and a half years. Um, as their head person. Now I started my own communications company. I decided to get out of athletics about five-ish years ago um, and do a lot of nonprofit, small business, a lot of tech startup stuff. So I like it. It's a good, good. Uh, I like being back in this just a little bit, but um, moved me around, took me out of life a little bit too much, I think, so decided to, to make a change. So yeah, no, it's fun to be here. Thanks for letting me mess around up here a little bit.
All right, once again, we have the microphones on the side, so please raise your hand and let them come to you, and please state your name and affiliation and direct your question to one of the players, please. All right. Bob? Hey, hey guys. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, it's a newspaper. It's not political or anything. But, um, hey, you guys are leading the nation in rebounding, you know, margin like 13 plus 13 something. What, what may, but, but no, but I think... Uh, Jackson's the only guy averaging, or just, no, Kennedy, I guess you're the only one averaging like more than six. What, what's the key to you guys leading the nation by such a wide margin? Uh, that's our main goal in every game that we go into. Uh, we want to um, win the rebound margin. Uh, I think that's what leads to wins. Um, I think that definitely uh, gives you another opportunity at getting shots. Um, so that's our main objective from the big man especially, and I know we had a two and a three man hitting the boards also. So. Uh, we just try to um, use our size to our advantage and uh, fight around the box house. Uh, Greg Barnes in South Carolina. Kennedy, along those lines, uh, given the, the pace of play that you guys play at, uh, does that help the offensive rebounding be so successful when, to do it against a, a defense maybe that's not set? I think so. Um, I think it kind of throws their defense to balance off. Um, I think um, kind of puts them on their heels and uh, we're, Joel is a type of point guard. Sev and Nate are type of point guards that likes to attack you. So um, that definitely opens it up for the rest of the team. Zach Brazil, New York Post. Joel, Arkansas is a team that likes to play uh, play fast. They they like to press. Is that kind of playing into your hands with the kind of athletes you have and the kind of depth you have? Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, we're a team that you know, if the other team happens to score, we try to get the ball out really fast and get it down the court. So. Um, you know, even though they press, I think it plays right into our hand because if we can get it out fast where they don't have to, um, you know, uh, get into their traps and everything, um, that helps us out. We can get down the floor and we have the guys, you know, on the wings that can be able to attack. So, hey, Kennedy, I was wondering what you thought about Moses Kingsley. He had a really big game yesterday against uh, – uh, Delgado, who's you know all Big East, just kind of what, what what you thought about going against Moses, just what you think about him as a player. Uh, he's a great defender. Um, he's a major key to their team, and uh, 
I mean, our main objective, of course, is going to try to get him out of the game as much as possible, um, attacking the ball inside. And um, it'll open the, the things up for our guards and Justin and Joel um, for an easy shot. So um, like I said, he's a great shot blocker. I think he's leading the SEC in shot blocks. Um, so he's got to either pump fake or just go right up. So um, our main objective tomorrow is to play as aggressive as we can um, and to try to get some things going for our team. Jeff Jones, CBS North Carolina. Uh, Joel, less than 24 hours after tweaking the ankle a little bit, I'm sure it's not 100%. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm walking better than I was yesterday. Uh, I did a lot of treatment today. Um, it's just a little sore, but overall, I feel pretty good. So, uh, Zach, Zach Brazil, we are close to uh, Kennedy, <clears throat> and, and for Joel, too. They're, do you expect them to continue to play the way they play? Do you expect them still to press you and still to try to make it an up-tempo game just despite the kind of athletes and the way you play? Yeah, I don't think that they would change their game plan um, at all. I mean, they do a great job of trapping. They do a great job of um, having defensive balance and their guards are aggressive. So um, I just think we have to do what we usually do, which is our press offense and uh, try our hardest to get the ball to the court as fast as we can so we can get it to our – uh, half court offense. Add anything? Um, yeah, I'll say the same thing. Um, I mean, they pretty much they've been doing that all year long, and I don't expect them to get to this point and try to change up what they're doing. So I expect them to stick with their game plan and continue to do what they do, and we just got to be ready for it. So. I guess for both guys, I think I got this stat right. The one seed's like 111 and 17 in the second round, so obviously. A pretty good winning percentage. How do you how do y'all approach that? Because there's been a few upsets, but not very many. How, as the number one seed, how do you guys approach that? Yeah, I mean, we don't pay attention to those stats. Um, I mean, I guess those stats are for you guys, but for us, we got to just continue to play, and um, we can't, you know, look at that and and try to say that you know that'll help us win. But um, I mean, we just got to continue to do what we do, and we got to go into each and every game and just be ready to play. And this one is going to be a physical and aggressive game, and we just got to be ready for that. Um, oh, you want both of them to answer it? Oh, yeah. I think we want to go into the game all the time thinking that we're going to win and we're going to be happy at the end result. So, um, like I said, our main focus is not to worry about which C we are, which C they are, um, because they're a great team and they're here for a reason. Uh, so we can't overlook them at all, and we definitely have to come out with the right mindset tomorrow, uh, focus on our scouting report, and uh, just put every uh, thing we have into it. Uh, Zach, so I'm your post. Joel, knowing what kind of game it is, do you look forward to tomorrow because you know it's going to be a back and forth, up and down game? And what, what is the key for you guys against their press and their tempo? Yeah, I just think more importantly is just stop them from scoring. And if we can get some rebounds to where they don't have a chance to set up for their press, I think that is, that's the first objective. And then the second one is just getting the ball out fast if they do score. And um, I mean, this is the kind of game I love. I like getting up and down the court. Um, and it's going to be a fun game. And it's going to be aggressive. But I think that we have the team and the guards to be able to withstand their press. And like I said, if we could just stop them from scoring and just get our rebounds and get out on the break, uh, that'll play right into our hand. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you.
Coach, how are you doing? Got the right cup. You today. do have the right cup. I'll put one out there just in case. <laughs> I'm going to have you do sure you're always covered with me. Opening comment, and then we'll okay. do questions. All right, we'll do a quick opening comment from Coach, and then we'll open it up for questions. Okay, we were uh, very pleased uh, that we're still here, number one, but uh, with the way we did a lot of things last night, uh, uh, realize that the NCAA tournament turns around pretty quickly. Um, we'll, I thought he was asking me something. <laughs> <laughs> Giving sign language. I didn't know if it was a NASCAR race or what the crap was going on. Uh, I, was, I was ready to quit and pit, though, if you needed me to. But... Uh, <laughs> No, we uh, did feel good about a lot of things last night. Uh, uh, got them something to eat, got them to bed, uh, getting ready to practice here. Uh, we have no idea if uh, Joel Berry, uh, what his ankle is going to be like in another 30 hours or whatever it is. Uh, he's not going to practice today. Uh, he's been getting treatment. Uh, I'm hopeful that he will play, uh, but just have to wait and see. I mean, the bottom line is I can't be Mr. Miyagi, as we said last night, and clap my hands together and rub it on it and make it better. So we just have to see what it's like. And it's the only time I was hoping that uh, we played at 1 or 2. And yet when I got the notice that we played at 6 o'clock, the way I looked at it is that's four more hours to, uh, for Joel to heal. So I, I'm hopeful that we'll have him. Zach Rizzo, your post. Coach, Arkansas loves to play fast. They press. Does that work in your favor just because of all the athletes and – you guys obviously thrive in the open court as well. Well, it, 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 uh, I don't know if I'd say it. we thrive uh, because of all those athletes we have. Uh, uh, we're good at a fast pace, which is the way we always play. Uh, the difference is if you play at a fast pace and you turn it over, it's not good. Uh, if we get the shot that we all want and go up and down the court, that is familiarity for us. Uh, we do want a fast pace. Arkansas wants a fast pace. They really guard the Dickens out of you in a full court. We try to guard you in a half court situation. It's just a different philosophy there. But uh, uh, we've got to uh, make sure we're not careless, we're not casual, we're not cool. Those three C words I don't like at all. And if you're careless, casual, or cool when you're playing with them, you're going back home. Roy Jeff Fischel from the ACCDN. How have you seen Justin's role emerge this year, and how has he taken to that being a leader and a, score, a primary scorer on this team? You know, last spring after the season's over with, we had several conversations going through the combine, had some more conversations, and we focused on two or three things, and I think he's done a great job with it. He's uh, really had a, a better focus, not that it was bad, but he had a better focus in the weight room. He's bigger, stronger, faster, quicker, and all those things. Uh, his shot is going in this year. Uh, so for us, uh, I told him I wanted him to be more aggressive. We needed him to rebound more. Need him to get the free throw line a little more. Hadn't gotten to the free throw line as much as I think he should have. Or uh, I think a lot of times the calls are just uh, he's got the little floater and everybody thinks it's okay because he's still got the shot off. But uh, I think he's done a fantastic job for us, understanding that we uh, want him to score and need him to score. I think he went through the four game stretch there at the end of the season and through the ACC tournament that uh, he perhaps was trying to do too much or do what he had been doing, but doing it quicker. And so just got to try to get him to settle down and just be Justin. Yeah, Coach, hey, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, you guys are plus 13 something on, on rebounding margin. What's, what's been the key to that? Because I think you only have one guy averaging more, more than six rebounds. Uh, we lost Bryce Johnson. Uh, last year, who was a great rebounder, led the league in rebounding, had 23 rebounds in one game. So from the first day of practice, we emphasized that uh, we've got to do a great job and rebound the basketball as a team. We don't have a natural guy that just goes and the ball finds his hands all the time like it did with Bryce. Uh, we pushed Theo and Justin, the three men on our team, that uh, you got to be able to go get some rebounds. We talked to uh, Theo when he's the two, Kenny Williams when he was the two, that you've got to go get some rebounds for us. Uh, me personally, for 29 years, I've really thought that that was the single most important factor in who wins the games, and so I've emphasized it forever. But uh, uh, we've had a couple of games this year where we didn't rebound it well, and we usually either got beat or struggled during those games. Hey, Coach, Jeff Jones, CBS North Carolina. You said you're kind of unsure about the status of Joel for tomorrow due to his ankle. If he can't go or if his minutes are limited, how does that change things specifically offensively? Well, uh, Nate Britt. Seventh Woods, Stillman White, those guys have to share the time. Uh, 
none of those guys have done as good a job as Joel shooting over 40% from three-point line. Uh, they've got to, uh, Nate shot it well last night, I think made two threes last night, uh, was five assists uh, on our chart, no turnovers. Uh, Stillman can shoot the basketball, seventh has tremendous speed and quickness. Uh, if I could put all three of them together and have one player at the end, I wouldn't be that worried. Uh, but uh, uh, Joel's been one of our leaders, and not just by scoring or shooting three-point shots, but the way he plays defense. But uh, we can't go out and draft anybody, uh, so we've got to figure out somebody to play. Brett Friedlander, North State yeah. Journal. Roy, um, what do you remember about the game against Arkansas in the second round in Jacksonville two years ago? And can that be any help in preparing for this? Because they've got pretty much an entirely new team. Yeah, I don't think it can give you much. I mean, their whole team, you look at their roster, on our scouting report, everybody's a junior or senior there. Uh, been through it. Some of those guys were playing at that time, but most of them were not, or half and half probably. But uh, uh, I know we won. I know it was a very aggressive game. I know I felt going into the game exactly how I feel right now, that we've got to attack, 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 under control, and not turn the ball over. Uh, Zach was on your post. Coach, tomorrow Duke is basically going to play a road game here against South Carolina because of the HB2 law. If if you were in that position, what would be your reaction to, because of that law, basically having to play a road game in the second round as a one or two seed? Well, you know, a lot of times one or two seed, one or two seeds get to play a home game, us and Duke both over the years. Uh, but I wouldn't, I just think it's a terrible law. Uh, that's the worst thing. It's not good for our state. I don't think we should be happy about it. It's embarrassment and those kind of things. But, uh, you know, we've, we've gone on the road played NCAA tournament games before. It's it's part of it. It's what you do. Right. I think right. we played Notre Dame at Notre Dame on St. Patrick's Day one time. Is that right, Artie? You're the only guy in here older than me. What's that? Yeah. I wore my master's green jacket just to tick everybody off. We won. Um, I'm not a member to Gus. I just had a jacket like that. that Yes, Nicole. Uh, Roy, Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. You mentioned Stillman. He's had a very unique career um, mm -hmm. and obviously a very unique experience in the middle of it. What was it like watching him come back to basketball? He said he barely touched a ball for two years. And, and you know, to see him be part of these teams these last couple of years. It was. You know, you think about it, you play, and you know, all of a sudden you're thrust into the magnificent spotlight of trying to go to the Sweet 16 with the guy who basically came as a walk-on kind of thing. And he really did a nice job. He, uh, I still say and believe that if we had been able to get to the Final Four, it would have been one of the great stories in, in North Carolina basketball. Uh, then he leaves for two years and he comes back, and the first year he's back, he's banged up and hurt all year. He had a foot problem while he was gone. It was still a thing that uh, was bothering him a great deal. This year he's been really something for us. He's led our uh, scout team, blue squad, whatever you want to uh, call them every day. He's been a load for everybody to handle. And I told him, I said, you may be the only guy that uh, I really have not given enough time for what you deserve. And so one day I asked him, I said, had you rather me praise you a lot like I've been doing or just give you more plus points to get out of sprinting? And he just looked at me and said, boy, coach, that's hard to, <laughs> hard to make that choice. Uh, but he's been fantastic for us. Roy, Luke Decock, Raleigh News and Observer. Um, I'm not old enough to remember when South Carolina was in the ACC, but with that kind of historical perspective, uh -huh. They're, you're playing an SEC team. They're SEC fans. You guys are North Carolina. They're South Carolina. Is the building going to be before, for or against you in, the, in, in your game tomorrow? What's your gut feeling? Oh, I got to think. I looked around yesterday. There were a lot of Carolina blue shirts in there, so I think we'll have a decent crowd. Uh, uh, I think we'll have uh, more people cheering for us and perhaps it will be cheering for Duke in the other game. Bobby Swafford, KF Sam in Fayetteville, Arkansas. When you look at Arkansas's lineup, uh, Moses Kingsley obviously stands out in the middle. But what have you seen from number zero, Jalen Barford, especially over the last couple weeks of the season? You know, Jalen, uh, and, and I haven't seen much of him. I saw about three minutes of their game against Kentucky. I, I think he was in the tournament. I don't th didn't they play Kentucky in the tournament just last week or week before last? Yeah, OK. I saw three or four minutes of that. but. Jalen, uh, you know, I, heard, I know the reputation, number one JUCO player in the country and all that kind of stuff. He's really got a great ability to get the ball to the basket and finish. He can uh, go in the medium post and shoot his turnaround jumper. 6'3", uh, 210 it looks like, and looks like he plays even bigger than that. I think he's been extremely important to them. And 
he fits into that uh, constant motion, harassment, havoc kind of mentality that Michael tries to push. Uh, he's been really, really good for him. He's a load for our guys, so I can tell you that. Kyle Duckelbaum, ABC yeah. in Little Rock. You mentioned last night how good of a job Mike Anderson has done with this team. Can you expand on that a little bit, what he's done well with this team? Well, you know, I've known Michael for a long time. I mean, I spent four or five, six years going to Arkansas playing in the college coaches golf tournament, spending time with Nolan and Michael. And Nolan's been a good friend and Rose, the family for me for a long time. But uh, uh, Michael coming back and replacing Nolan, not replacing him, but that's what everybody thought. There was a couple of coaches in the middle there too, I think. But uh, uh, everybody thought Arkansas basketball's back and that was a pretty big burden for him to start with. But he's a guy that just sort of keeps plodding along, plodding along and plodding along. He looks more like a sprinter than a marathon guy, but I happen to think he's a marathon guy who's really stuck to his philosophy, stuck to what he believes in, the way that he uh, worked with Nolan when Nolan was the head coach. He's added his own personal traits to it, but I think he's comfortable coaching that way. And I even saw, and uh, it might have been in their media guide stuff, or maybe it's just off of paper, I guess three or four kids who have committed to come there next year, all three of them, the state of Arkansas. And, yeah, he talked about that, their pride in Arkansas basketball, and uh, he has a great deal of pride in Arkansas basketball and just done a great job, I think. He's a good guy. Good guy. His wife's a lot nicer than he is, but other than that, he's okay. Yeah, Coach, I guess it's going to be the – I know you guys have played a lot more tournament games, but this is going to be the third straight time. Arkansas has been in the tournament and played North Carolina in the second round. I know you played when you were at KU in the Elite Eight, I think it was. Just what, what do you think about – you know, playing Arkansas three straight times like this and, and kind of the North Carolina-Arkansas because this is a sixth tournament game between mm -hmm. the two teams. Well, I'm, I'm not sure about the three straight. Have we played them three straight ourselves? When did well, we play them again? It was, it was, it was, it was 08, two years ago. They, they, they didn't go between 08 and 2015. Okay, okay, I yeah. got you. I got you. So, I so, so they've, they've kind of been running into yeah. that Carolina blue wall. Um, we did it with Michigan when I ended up at North Carolina. My couple, last couple of years at Carolina, we played Michigan, we played Michigan, we played Michigan. I went to Kansas, and they played Michigan again, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, a couple of years ago, we kept playing Kansas in Kansas City and Kansas in St. Louis. I wanted to play them in North Carolina one time. But uh, uh, it's weird the way those things happen like that. But, again, uh, I think I'm right in saying this. Nolan Richardson's first clinic that he did in uh, UTEP after the passing of his daughter, he asked me if I'd go, and I went to that just because it was Nolan. And the people at Arkansas, uh, they treated me uh, fantastic. And I was there a lot during those uh, years playing in that golf tournament, spending time there. Uh, Bobby Wilson, you see, advertising some weird thing to help your golf game on TV. He was the pro there at uh, uh, Pinnacle. Uh, he's a long drive champion of the world for three or four or five years. I've known Bobby and Mr. Hudson, uh, Mr. Hunt, the Walton people, I mean, um, Walmart people, excuse me, they, they were always good. So for me, it's just, uh, and, and with Mike, I mean, we've been on a lot of trips together and he's a guy that I really enjoy and uh, uh, have a great deal of respect for. So I don't really look at it as, you know, North Carolina, Arkansas, to me, it's people I have a great deal of respect for. Back. Roy, Luke was mentioned in South Carolina. What are your memories of, of those days when they were just as big a rival as anybody else in the ACC? In those days, the big rivalries really meant there was a lot more going on than everybody knew about. Now with social media, if it had things going on back then, there would have been guys that weren't playing for years and years and years or coaching in years and years and years. It was a fierce rivalry. It was a, a very heated rivalry. There was a lot of things openly said between the two teams, and yet you had Frank McGuire and, and, and Dean Smith, who had a great deal of respect for each other. But, uh, oh, I, I was in school at that time. Some of the big-time games, some of the very violent games, things that went on during those games. Uh, I still remember one of the North Carolina players, and I know who he is, yelled, contact, contact, and everybody stopped. And I remember the South Carolina player, and I know who he is. But if you want to find out, you've got to do your homework going out in the middle of the court and stomping his feet, trying to break, <laughs> smash the contact. I mean, and that wasn't looked upon as that unusual, you know, that kind of thing. So it was big time rivalry in those days. But uh, Frank Martin has really done a fantastic job down there. And uh, uh, this place has a chance to be rocking for him tomorrow night, but they got their hands full. Roy, Jeff Fischel again from the ACCDN. Uh, when you guys are playing well defensively, what are you seeing on the floor? 
I wish I'd see a heck of a lot more of it. That's a big thing that I've got it. Uh, when we're playing well defensively, uh, I think everybody's really focused and seeing the big picture and knowing what the other team's trying to do. And uh, five guys moving together every time the ball moves, five individuals need to move. And uh, for us, then you have to finish it with the box out. Uh, I mean, last night the ball was shot and one of our guys turned around and looked and the ball bounced over his head and I turned to the, st to the team. What, what is it that we don't understand? 91 practices, 34 games, and I'm still having to preach going to box somebody out. So uh, I'd like those ideas of I hope that we have that scenario tomorrow when we're playing defense. I hope it's out there. I'll take one final question if there is one. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.
All right, we'll start our press conference with the student athletes from uh, Duke. Reminder, no video in this room, no flash photography. And when you address your questions, address them to a specific student athlete. Uh, David Kloniger with the state. If both of you guys could take it. What do you know about Sundarius Thornwell for South Carolina? Have you been able to, to watch him throughout the season or, or from last night's film? Grayson, why don't you start? Excuse me. Uh, well, he's really good. Um, you know, he's an old player. He's very tough, and uh, he does a bunch of different things for their team. I mean, he scores the ball, rebounds, blocks shots, gets steals, and and uh, so he's going to be a very tough matchup for us. You know, I think he's he's really a big key for their team, and and with how much he provides for them. Frank, good. Uh, you know, I think Grayson touched on that perfectly. You know, he's a talented basketball player. Um, they're a talented basketball team. Um, so we're just looking for a good matchup tomorrow. And you know, I know that he's going to bring it, and the rest of their squad is going to bring it as well. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. For both players, initially this, this region was supposed to be in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, but because of the HB2 law, it's here. And it's, you know, it's a 90-minute drive from their campus. Last night, it felt like a home game for them. What are your thoughts on basically having to play a road game as a number two seed in the second round? Grace. Um, I mean, it's, it's another game for us. And, uh, you know, we, we like tough environments. We've played in tough environments um, uh, all year, really. And, you know, I did, I did hear their crowd at the end of our game. I mean, when they were coming onto the court, they got a, they got a big standing ovation from their crowd. And they're going to be well supported. Um, you know, we know we're going to have Duke fans in the, in the crowd, too. But uh, it's, it's really just another tough game for us. You know, we, we've been in these tough situations um, throughout the year. Uh, you know, everywhere we play is, is a, a brutal environment, and you know, um, I think we'll be ready. And you know, we've been preparing, you know, the whole season um, for tomorrow night and for you know, the weeks to come. Pete, uh, Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Frank, how do you? I mean, obviously, you hear the, the 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 booze Grayson gets every time he touches the ball from a lot of places. How do you think he handles it? And do you think you could handle it if it were happening? To you, that seems like a lot to put on somebody's shoulders. You know, it is. And, you know, G's a, a tough kid. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, with the, with the support from his teammates and from the coaching staff, um, you know, he's been able to, you know, fight through all that stuff. Um, he's not worried about it. You know, we're worried about what, what goes on in our locker room. Um, you know, no one knows what we go through day in and day out. Um, but, you know, I know that. You know, if that happened to me, you know, I have a, a group of guys who, who care and love about me. And, you know, that's all that matters to us is, you know, what happens um, inside of our locker room. Grayson, now Art Chansky, WCHL Radio. I read a story in the Jacksonville paper, which is a pretty amazing story about you and your friend Savannah. And I was first uh, Googled around and I was surprised that the story didn't get picked up much anywhere else. But the fact that uh, she died two days before the Elon game, I had to think that that had something to do with, you know, the emotion you were feeling, you know, during that period of time. Can, can you comment on that? Yeah, well, that, that's a long time ago, and there's, there's really no connection between that and what happened on the court. Um, and, you know, really anything further with that, that's the story that was in the Jacksonville paper that was, uh, that story was for Savannah and her family, and we wanted to get Savannah's story out there, you know, it wasn't trying to make it about me or anything like that. And so... Um, really, to answer your question, there, there was no connection with what happened on the court. Um, and, you know, the reason it wasn't out there was just because I didn't want it to be out there. You know, I just wanted it to be between me and her family. Question, Pete? Hey, Pete Kennedy from WSPA-TV here in the upstate. That South Carolina did a pretty good job stopping a good three-point shooting team last night, especially in the second half. For Grayson first and maybe for Frank, just some of the things that jump out about what you saw defensively out of them and, and how you'll try to attack that kind of defense. Well, they're, they're very strong defensively. Um, they really just come after you the whole game. Um, you know, I know they, they forced a lot of turnovers um, last night and even throughout the whole season. That's, that's really what they do defensively. And, um, you know, they're a very aggressive defensive team. So they're, they're going to go for block shots. They're going to go for steals. They're going to um, rat at the ball and dig. And so you have to be very tough with the ball. And, um, you know, you just have to be tough when you're attacking them. You know, it's not, you can't take breaks on offense just because of how strong they are and how active they are. And, um, you know, another part of that is they're a very big team. Um, you know, they're very big and long. And even when they go small, they're still big. And so, 
um, you know, that really helps with their length and, and contesting shots. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Grayson, uh, tomorrow is the first time South Carolina is playing after a victory in the NCAA tournament. You guys seem to do it every year. Do you think that experience that you have can be a help come tomorrow? Uh, it can be a help, but you know this. Our team has never played after a win in the NCAA tournament either, and we have a lot of freshmen that we rely on, and and that was their first NCAA tournament game, and um, and where South Carolina is a, a very experienced team, regardless of tournament experience, and so um, and I don't I don't know if we're getting any advantage from that. It's just you know both teams got to come out ready to play. Left. Hey, this question is for both of you guys. Uh, Jeff Jones, CBS North Carolina. Yesterday, Coach spent a lot of time talking about Emil and Matt and their um, leadership roles on the team. Can you guys tell us what they mean to the team off the court and how important their roles are this time of the year? Grayson, you want to take that first? Yeah. Well, well those, those two guys, they've, they've been in the tournament. They've played a lot of tournament games. Um, Emil's played a lot of Duke games, and so has Matt. And so they're, they, know, they know our coach. They know our program. They know everything. And so um, really, they, they can just echo whatever the coaches are saying and even say some of the stuff they're not. And um, both of those guys were a big parts of our freshman year tournament, my, my freshman year tournament run in 2015. And, and so they've been here. They've been in the tournament. And they have the experience of Emil especially has an experience of really leading a team. And so um, really, we're just all ears just listening to them and, and following their example both on and off the court and how we're conducting ourselves at the hotel. Yeah, and I think you know, on, on court, they're both uh, tremendous leaders. Um, but as you were talking about off the court, um, you know, being a freshman, they've been able to get me through um, some maybe some hard times and rough patches uh, my freshman year. So to have those two guys as you know, our, our captains and our team leaders has been huge. Um, you know, they really have been there for quite a while now, and they know what goes on. They know how to get through kind of hard times and, and situations they were in uh, when they were my age. So, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for, for better captains on our team. Zach Brazil, you're on post. Grayson, you, you said you guys have been in tougher environments all year, so tomorrow night's not going to phase you. Is it different, though, an NCAA tournament, a winner go home game to be a road team, do you think? Um, well, just I mean, just thinking about recently for us, we, and we're playing in the ACC tournament where um, you know we're playing a game, and not only are the opposing fans there, but Carolina's fans are also there waiting to boo us too. So, I mean, we we've played in games that are supposed to be neutral, and it feels like an away game, so it's not much difference. And with it being a tournament game, there's always going to be a lot of pressure on, on the game for both teams, and so both teams just got to play and win. Isn't that going to be kind of similar tomorrow because you got Carolina here? Exactly, yeah. It's always going to be like that for us. Al. Al Featherston, Access Sports. I wanted to ask both guys, because you're shooters, about the mentality of bouncing back from a bad game or a bad streak. Um, Luke yesterday had his worst shooting game of the season. You've had good games, great games, bad games. Can you just talk about bouncing back and what you have to think about both of you, because you're both shooters? Um, you know, I, Luke is he's human he's a human being you're not going to be perfect all the time um, but you know he's been terrific throughout the season and uh, you know he continues to shoot the ball well every single game no matter you know how many shots or how many shots he makes um, but you know you just want to have a mindset to stay aggressive um, you know I know that uh, all of our perimeter players are, are knockdown shooters and you know as, as you just keep shooting and seeing the ball go in um, you know it gets easier as you know the game goes along. I just, I mean, I tell guys just to, I like math, so I just tell them, look at it like math. You know, if you miss four and you're a 50% shooter, next four got to go in. It'll even out eventually, so just keep shooting it. Mitchell Gladstone, New Chronicle. Frank, uh, just in terms of South Carolina, obviously they're a strong defensive team, but they took it to Marquette late in the game with a, that 68 to 16 0 run. They're definitely a physical team on both ends of the floor, and you seem to sort of handle that better toward the end of the season. Um, how are you going to handle their physicality on both ends, not just defensively, but also their ability to take it to you guys offensively? Um, you know, I'm going to still, you know, look to stay aggressive but at the same time, you know, not try to let them speed me up. Um, just play my game, uh, let the offense flow into, you know, whatever we're running. But, uh, you know, like G said, you know, they're an experienced team. Um, you know, that's what they do. They pressure the ball. They, they force turnovers. So, you know, I think I just got to find the open guy and stay poised and, uh, you know, just run our offense. Anything else for the student athletes? Thanks, guys. Thank you.
time, actually. Okay, good. We'll start off with a uh, quick opening statement, and then we'll take some questions. Yeah, well, you know, we're good uh, you know, health-wise, except for Marquis. You know, for about three days now, he's just had flu-like symptoms. We didn't even bring him over here today, just to give him IVs and medication and see what happens with him. But the other guys are in good shape and uh, ready to play a, an outstanding team and uh, one of the best, maybe the most, the best unheralded great player <laughs> in the United States uh, in Thornwell. But they're not a one-man team. They're uh, obviously very, very well coached. They're men and they're coached by a man. And uh, so we're going to have to be men tomorrow night in order to beat them. Uh, David Kloniger with the state. Mike, you mentioned Sendarius Thornwell. Does he remind you of anybody that you might have coached throughout your career? Yeah, he's really unique. I, yeah. He's so unique. I, uh, I'd hate to – I think he's him, you know. And, uh, yeah, he leads their team in everything. But then he – He's their leader, and then, you know, you don't see as much on tape w until you see him in person, but last night I uh, saw a couple times where uh, Wojo was giving a signal to his team of what to run, and then you would see him tell his teammates this is what they're going to run, and then put him, you know, like, come on, you know, that's, that's not alive and well. And and uh, and in and our sport, like he, he's really like an old school great player, and I say that with the highest level of compliment. Abash Tyher, Carolina Blitz, uh, Coach. I read today that 37 years ago you were hired at Duke. Uh, you've put together an impressive coaching tree, and Frank Martin said yesterday that he patterned his defensive philosophy after your, your Duke teams. Uh, what does that mean to you as a coach to have that type of legacy? Well, I'm, I'm honored that he would say that. I didn't know he said that. And uh, I, I think, you know, if you're in the business as long as I've been in, uh, you, that means you've probably had pretty good success. And so someone's gonna pattern a little bit about what you do about any of those guys like I'm sure Roy, Jim Beheim, you know, Patino, the, these guys, they, you know, they've stood the test of time. And, uh, you know, and, you know, he, he can hang his hat on his own thing because, uh, you know, he's really good. But I, I, I'm really pleased and, and to hear that. That was a nice thing for him to say. Al. Al Feathers and XS Sports. Uh, Mike, I want you to help me with a little history. 1960, I don't know about that. Well, this is your personal. 1969 NIT. You're oh, playing yeah. South Carolina. Did you defend John Roach that night? I did defend John Roach. Uh, so what six, memories? Well, we won. Yeah, yeah we. Uh, uh, he had six points, and uh, I'd like to say it was because of me, but it was because they they played a double high offense. You know, they put their two big guys out at the elbows and they screened for him. And one of my teammates, Mike Wove, was so good at it, he just yelled stuff at him. And I think John never went to that side, so I knew he was only going to the side that Dick Simmons was on. And, uh, uh, you know, there was no shot clock or anything. I, if there was a stat for time of possession for an NCAA player, I probably would have won it that year <laughs> because I kept, I was not allowed to shoot and I just went from side to side trying to get the ball to our two shooters and, uh, and you know, we won, I think, 57 to 45. I think that was it. But that was a, that was a good, that was a good win. David. Uh, Mike, sticking with the historical angle, what do you remember about Bill Foster when you replaced him? Well, Bill was, you know, I think, you know, one of the innovators uh, about promotion. He was not only an outstanding coach, he's really an outstanding guy. And, uh, but he, he promoted the game well. He did things 
earlier than people did him. Like, it, it'd be unbelievable if he was a, a coach in this era to see what he would do with social media. And it's just really innovative. And some of the things that he did at Duke, our logo, you know, with not this one, but the other one with the bat. I think he's the one who started that. Uh, and he just, you know, a good man, good man, loved by his, loved by his, uh, the kids who he, he had the honor to coach. The right. Uh, Jessica Morgan, the Rally News and Observer. Coach, how has Grayson um, remained an integral part of what you guys do? He's coming off the bench now, but especially as you guys are immersed in the tournament, how has he kind of remained um, key to what you guys do? Yeah, good. The main thing, Jessica, is that he's healthier. You know, and, you know, he knows that he's as good as anyone on our team. And, you know, you can only put five guys out there. And so uh, by putting him in when we do, we can keep at least two of our major scorers in all the time. Uh, he, Luke, and, and Jason, those are our three best scorers. And uh, it actually, I think, helps us keep a better offensive continuity. And, uh, but he'll play as many minutes as anybody, you know, in, in a game and in end of game situations. End of half, like the end of half yesterday was big, you know, for him to hit that three and then Jason get the block. You know, we had a, a like a five point differential there. And, 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 but Grayson's playing real well. Hey, Coach, Pete Gannity from WSPA TV here in the Upstate. As someone who appreciates good defense, what were some of your observations last night watching South Carolina, in addition to Thornwell and some of the things they do that makes them so good? Well, they'll be as good a defensive team as we'll, we have played against. Uh, they, uh, first of all, they're together. You know, you, uh, they, every position is pressured. You have to work hard to get open. And... Um, and then they rebound well. They're, uh, you, you have to beat a, a, a great defense. And uh, we, have, we have to be strong to uh, get open and, uh, and strong in our movements because they're going to be strong in trying to stop us in, in doing that. They're, you know, when you say a team plays physical, it doesn't mean that a team is fouling. You know, they, they are a physical team. And, when you're physical and you play hard, it, it usually means you got a you got a well coached team, you know, and that that's what they are. I, I really think they're an extension of of their coach. Yeah, you know, he's a really good guy. He's a tough competitor, and uh, his kids believe in him. And he's built something really good here. The right, Zach Brazil in your post. Coach, the other day you talked about the HB2 bill, but now because of it you have a pseudo road game in the second round as a two seed. What are your thoughts on the kind of atmosphere you guys are going to run into tomorrow night? Yeah, you know, we're okay. We're fine. You know, we usually, we always play in front of a packed arena, and when we're on the road, we're always in an arena where people want to beat us, and uh, we'd rather have a, a, a an upbeat uh, crowd. I don't think it'll hurt us. It probably helps them because uh, it's nice to hear people cheering for you. But I, I don't, it, I don't, it won't be intimidating to us. And that's just the way it is. I have, I have no complaints. We're, you know, let's, let's just play. You know, we're, we're okay. If we lose, it won't be because we couldn't, they had more people here than we did. It'll be because they played better defense than we played offense. You know. You're right. Mike Seal, yeah. Brown, ESPN.com. Um, I'm kind of fishing here, but we haven't really seen a lot of the quote-unquote madness this year, the buzzer beaters, the crazy upsets. Is there anything? What, what would you attribute that to? Yeah, I haven't really watched the whole tournament. I, I, there have been a number of close games just because, you know, you haven't seen one team hit one more shot than another doesn't mean the tournament's bad. You know, I mean, you know. Yeah. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Somebody said that one time before. I think, you know, when you see the teams that are so-called favor to win-win means that they're playing well. So I don't see how that is a dull tournament. Uh, yeah. 
John Obianco with the Big Spurs. Coach, P.J. Dozier has a lot of length and yeah. athleticism. Is there a player that you, you guys have played against that maybe compares to him, and, and what does he do that's so special? Well, he's really good. He's got a great wingspan. He, uh, you know, he's a basketball player who doesn't have a position. You know, he can be used anywhere. Uh, they use him a lot at the point, but I wouldn't call him a point. You know, he's just uh, – and he can defend a lot of people. I, again, I, I don't like, you know, for me to kind of compare players. And you guys do that. You should – yeah. It's, um, you do it probably be better. Yeah, I know you guys make predictions better than me. So uh, those two things, comparisons and predictions are in your court. All right. In the back, Mike Archansky, WCHO Radio. Um, I want to follow up a question that I asked Grayson. Um, I have a very good Duke friend. You may not believe that, but I have a very good Duke friend named Doran Pinnell who sent me in a pretty amazing article from the Jacksonville paper about Grayson and his friend Savannah. Yeah. And it kind of traces uh, their relationship and the fact that she died a couple of days before uh, the Elon game. And at that time, you said, you know, we trying to keep coaches trying to keep everything in the family and, and, and you said you guys don't know half of what's really going on, so. Is Actually, that, more not, than that. Huh? More than half. Yeah, more, 90%, right. right. So, not, I don't want you to comment on this particular case, but that is an example <clears throat> of something that the public might not have known at a time when. Yeah, uh, well, I think, Art, right, you hit on a good point for all these kids in that, uh, you know, again, we live in this um, quick, judgment, shallow analysis world, really, because of Twitter and all this stuff to, to get something out. And we don't have to document anything. We don't have to investigate. We can hear something, and we put it out. And then we're not held accountable for whether it was true or not. And it can take on a life of its own. And that's for any player. And, you know, uh, we're dealing with college kids who are growing up, and they uh, – they're not professionals, and it, it, as educators, we're supposed to uh, preserve and educate the kids that we have the honor to coach and uh, not to appease uh, a quick judgment, shallow analysis uh, type of judgment on, on things. And, and so that, that's all, and we're going to continue to do that, and we'll bear the praise or the crit criticism of, of, what that, of what happens in that regard. Grayson said that uh, the story didn't get circulated very much because he didn't want it circulated. It was so story written. Yeah, but that shows so shallow analysis. In other words, if somebody wanted to look deeper, it, and it, where it wouldn't ruin their story. A lot of people don't want their story ruined. They want to create a story. And by more in-depth analysis, a lot of times the story would go away, and then you wouldn't have a chance to tweet it or have surveys or judgments or all these things that people have right now. And again, so be it. But, uh, you know, we can't live in that world. And the world, that I can't live in that world. It seemed that that would have been a good story for the public to know to balance it. But he said he, they wrote it just for Savannah's family, and that's all he wanted. God bless him for doing that. And uh, there are a lot of things that all these kids do on all teams that go unnoticed, that coaches do and whatever. But it's called using your platform the right way and, and not just for bringing attention to yourself, but bringing maybe comfort, you know, some help. To, to people, and not everyone needs to know it. There, there doesn't have to be a TV camera or, or a Snapchat or a t tweet of it or Instagram or anything. And a lot of times that ruins it. That ruins it. And uh, so, again, we're not the only – look, there are a lot of these, these kids who do things like that. And he did that, and he's done more. You know, but we're not going to say, well, now it's okay that he tripped. You know, and we're not like he did that. That was wrong. But there's a lot more into it than, than that. Coach, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I'm going to go check Twitter.
All right, Coach, just an opening comment, and then we'll take some questions. Um, watching a lot of film last night, I've come to the conclusion that Duke's pretty good. So I think they're a well-coached team, too. It's uh, got an unbelievable challenge ahead of us and, and one that we're excited for. Um, uh, they're, they're playing real good basketball. They're healthy. They, they got all their parts. Obviously, coaches' personality, being there every day again, has kicked in, and uh, uh, we got our hands full. Questions? Uh, Frank, Mark Bradley from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. It was a year ago that uh, the SEC hired Mike Trangizi as a uh, consultant to help prop up basketball. Now you've got five teams in the tournament, four of them are still going, and, and two of you have a chance to make some noise against the ACC here tomorrow. Do you see this your your games here in particular, particular as a as a real opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we all of us in the SEC uh, understand that we're carrying uh, a banner that's a little bigger than just our own schools. Um, uh, we know we've got a real good league. You know, it's unfortunate that. Uh, there's been a message put out there. I'm not saying our league's better than anybody's. I've been in other leagues. I comprehend how good every league is. Uh, but we don't take a back seat to anybody. And uh, um, that's, that's the one good thing that I, can, I can't speak for the other SEC schools. I know they feel this way, but I don't want to speak for them. Our guys are battle tested because of the games that we've had to play in our conference. It's. Uh, um, Playing Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Florida, Arkansas, all them teams. It's our guys have been prepared for this moment, and uh, um, and we 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 collectively, the coaches, we're you know we're, we're taking pride in in, in in trying to change this whole message about the SEC being inferior to other leagues. David Kloniger with the state. Frank, just how difficult is it to try to, to game plan for a team like Duke with guys who are so big and can play inside and out and, and don't really you know, stick at one spot on the floor? It's hard. It's the same thing as preparing to play Kentucky. I mean, you know, trying to play Alabama. I'm not trying to disrespect Duke. I'm just, I mean, they got real good players. Kentucky has real good players. Florida has real good players. North Carolina has real good players. I just, it's what you face at this time of year. And, you know, you don't trick your way into the NCAA tournament. You don't trick your way into winning in the NCAA tournament. You earn your way into that. And Duke's very, Duke, Duke is phenomenal. I, and I'm a huge Mike Krzyzewski fan. Um, I think we're pretty good too. You know, I, I like our guys. Um, they've taken me an unbelievable ride right now. Um, our guys are going to go out, and they're going to do what they've done every game this year. They're going to lay it on the line. At the end, it's either going to be good enough or not. And, you know, we're excited. We can't wait. Pete? Hey, Coach. Pete Yannity from WSPA-TV here in the Upstate. The other day you said if you win Friday night, you'd enjoy it for about 45 minutes, then go on to the task at hand. Well, here you are now in the process of that. So how do you get that mindset to work, not only for today, but for a long day tomorrow? And, and what are some of the techniques you can apply to make sure the guys are, are ready? Um, guys are fine. We, we, uh, um, there are some people that weren't very happy when they announced our game time tomorrow. I was ecstatic. Uh, I remember in 2010, uh, we played Xavier when I was at Kansas State, and um, I was done with the media close. To, I got to the hotel at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was a double overtime game, and it was the last game of the night. Uh, we found out right after the game uh, that our Saturday game was going to be the first one of the day. So we turned around and tipped off at 1 something, 2 o'clock p.m. I can't, it's the first one of the day. That's kind of 36 hours later. You know, from the time I walked in the hotel to the time we actually tipped off, and um, that wasn't very good. So we, we've had time to recompose ourselves. Uh, we've got time to prepare all day tomorrow. Uh, we've got time all day today. 
Uh, so it's, it's preparation is not going to be a problem. We, we expose our guys to these quick turns during the season on purpose. Uh, who you're preparing against is what the problem becomes. And uh, our guys will be prepared. They'll be ready to go. Our guys have, have shown the ability to, to, to prepare on a quick turn. Uh, we just got to hope that we play real well. Back. Coach Joe Cook, WLTX in Columbia. Um, the word confidence has come up a lot in the last 24 hours. What can confidence do and what is it doing for your team, especially in this setting, and given uh, that win last night, best game of the year for, for your guys? Um, I don't care what walk of life you're in. If you got no confidence in what you're doing, you're not going to succeed. And we became a good team because we got a lot of confidence in who we are, and that didn't start on Wednesday of this week. That's something that started five years ago. And a lot of times you don't win a game, and the people on the outside think that your team is not confident. But the way your guys handle that moment lets you know whether you can have confidence in them or not. Uh, our guys are a confident group of kids. That, that's not lacking in, in who we are. Um, our guys are confident. Uh, once we got past the first eight, ten minutes of the game yesterday, I thought the nerves kind of went away and, and everyone focused in on the game itself. And we, we, we eliminated some of the mistakes that we were making. And, uh, and then we played with a, a, an unbelievable uh, uh, desire um, that, that our guys have played with all year. The difference is that we were able to convert some open court opportunities. We were able to, to make some threes. You know, Sindarius made a three when we needed one. Ralph Felder made a three when they were in the middle of a run where they could have flipped the game again. And, and yet he just jumps up and makes a three. And I'm sitting there saying, talking about confidence? That's a freshman. I'm saying, wow, what courage to just jump up and shoot that ball, let alone make it. And, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an unbelievable group of guys. It's an unbelievable group of guys. And uh, we'll be confident and we'll be ready tomorrow night. Um, that's not going to be the reason why we succeed or not succeed uh, Sunday night. In the middle? <laughs> okay. Brad Singer, Anderson, the Pinda Mel. Frank. When you look at Luke Kennard, a guy who can score in so many ways, what can you do to, to try to get him off his game? Uh, he's a hard guard, man. You know, and they do a great job of putting him in different actions. Um, uh, they make it hard. They put him in so many different actions that, that it's hard to just focus in on one part of the floor. Um, you got to have guys that are connected. You can't guard them with one got to be your team um, and it's going to be a hard guard he, he's a heck of a player heck of a player and 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 you know it's not just that he can score is that he knows when to go and not to go there's some guys that score they think they can go all the time and they end up taking a bunch of bad shots so they'll score a lot of points but they also give you a lot of opportunities because bad shots is it's a turnover he doesn't take bad shots. He knows when to go and when not to go. Very efficient player. Um, uh, difficult guard. Difficult guard. You know, we're, we're, we're going to practice here in a little bit. And um, we've been studying film. And, and then we're going to have to do the best we can. You know, we uh, earlier this year, you know, we had to prepare for a guy named Malik Monk, who's pretty dynamic in his ability to score. Uh, and we did a good job at times. And then we also lost him at times. But uh, we, we, we got our hands full with Luke. He's, he's, he's a, studying him all night last night. I watch him play whenever I can during conference play. It's hard for me to watch teams from other leagues that we're not going to play. It's hard for me to watch them. Uh, but I've watched him a lot here last night and today. And uh, he's a hard guard. He's a heck of a player. Any other questions? Ms. Run. Frank, I'm not sure if you heard, but Brad Underwood was just hired at Illinois. I didn't know uh, what you would have to speak about Brad's job and what you'd say to him after this. Are you serious? Yeah, the Illinois confirmed it. The AD confirmed it. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic for him. 
I knew some things were going on. I'm not talking about Illinois, about where he's at. Uh, I'm ecstatic for him. Uh, uh, he spent a lot of time at Western Illinois, so uh, there's, I know he and his wife love that part of the country. Uh, I'm really, really happy for him. Any other questions? One more? Hey, Coach, I was just talking to a couple of players um, in the locker room. They said what makes this team very unique is, is the chemistry, the amount of belief that they have each other. And they said it started in Costa Rica. How did that trip help, and how do you think it's paying dividends right now, especially as you get on bigger stages and the lights get a little bit brighter? There's a reason why I didn't coach in practice or in games where we went down to Costa Rica, because uh, I knew we had a lot of new parts, and we had some guys that needed to put their thumbprint on the program. They needed to become... Um, the new voice. Michael Carrera was so emotional and so loud with everything he did uh, that he dominated the, the personality of the team. Uh, I knew that other people needed to kind of become that voice, that passion. And uh, so I purposely, I didn't do it, not because some people say, well, you know, you're around your players too much. They hear your voice, it gets old. I think that's the biggest one. I've never gotten old of listening to my mother talk to me. <laughs> so I don't, I've never understood the, the whole thought process that you coach your players too much. Uh, I needed to observe them so I can see who was signing up for what jobs and who wanted nothing to do with certain things. I wanted to see how they coexisted with each other. Uh, and when I watch those practices. The first thing I took away from it is how good a coach Matt Figger is. The second thing I took away from it was these guys really want to win. The way they helped each other, the way they, they competed with one another, um, the way the older guys looked out for the first year guys. Uh, the first year guys didn't show up with the answers on the contrary. They were listening to the older guys as to how do we do this? And I saw that, and that's, that's when I said, you know what, we got a chance. We got a chance, and, uh, and it's never stopped. It's continued to happen, and uh, that's a tight-knit group in there. Tight, tight-knit group, and um, that's why we're here. We're not here because we've got a good player. We're here because we've got a team, and they're fun to be around. Coach, thank you. One more, Phil. Just wanted to ask you. And you uh, know Phil too. I know Phil too. Yeah, for oh, yeah. about forty years. So. Phil's, Phil's popping uh, around. I tell you, known him a long time. You, feel, you feeling okay today? <laughs> if I could have slept till ten in the morning, I'd feel a lot better, <laughs> Phil. Uh, what do you think of Silva's play last night? And, and, yeah. And, and the other bigs. Did, did you get out of them what you were hoping for? Absolutely. I thought Coatsar had the best game he's played since who knows when. You know. Um, uh, Mike had a great week of practice. I, I told Mike, you scored more in practice. He was more engaged in, in, in plays in our four practices leading into the NCAA tournament than he had been in the whole month of February. Um, I thought Chris was great until he committed those two nonsense fouls in the second half. He stayed away from those for the most part, uh, and then he commits those two fouls that just I, – I, I, I'm, I'm out of words. I don't know how to get him to stop doing that. I really don't. I wish if I did, he wouldn't commit those fouls anymore. Uh, but I think he's gotten better at it. But then here, all of us, then last night, in a three minute span, he commits three fouls, and two of them are like nonsense fouls. Uh, but I thought those two guys uh, were a big, big reason why we won. I understand Sin and PJ were great, and they, uh, they made the plays that, that, uh, that created the stats part of it. I thought Kotsar, his Mike Kotsar's ball screen defense yesterday was phenomenal. Uh, the times we switched off, his ability to keep little guards in front of him, I thought he was phenomenal. That was a big, big reason why we were able to do a better job in the second half uh, on contesting a three-point line. And I thought Chris played real well, too. Um, you know, Chris, Chris and Mike, they're so young. Chris, Chris got embarrassed when he missed that dunk and, you know, and he, he just kind of got embarrassed. And then he comes down and he commits a foul that's just 
it's a bad foul. And um, but those two guys, he Chris was the happiest guy in the locker room after the game. It's unbelievable. He he uh, he's a beautiful kid. Beautiful kid. Coach, thanks very much. Thank you.